Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of DevDrawer. Today we're going to be going into how to create a simplified PHP autoloader class that allows you to pull all of your classes from a specific folder and be able to use them throughout the website with just a few lines of code. Let's get started. Before I get too far into it, if you have not already, definitely subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of content. Hit the bell notification so you're aware whenever I do new videos. I try to do them once a week, and if you want to learn PHP, WordPress, some front-end code, uh, database code, I got tutorials on all of it. So if you're interested in that kind of content, you know, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, like the videos. It does help with the algorithm for YouTube. Um, and also, if you haven't seen it yet, I did create a live stream of music that I listen to on a daily basis. So check it out. Um, the link will be in the description. Uh, basically, while you're working, you can have some music playing in the background. It's pretty, you know, lo-fi music. Some of it's a little techno. Some of it's a little... Um, it kind of energizes you a little bit. So that's the kind of music that I listen to. And if you want to, it's streaming 24 hours a day. So check it out. So... If you've never used it before, an auto load class is essentially a way for you to load all of your controllers at one time without having to go in there and declare each one of them. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's say we want to, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it controllers. Controllers. And then inside of this folder, I'm going to create a new file and we're just going to call it pages.php. So this is going to have a class of pages. Add PHP to this, and there. Okay, so this one's going to have a class of pages, and then inside of this class, let's just create a function called uh, get page. So let's do public uh, function get page. We don't need to pass any variables to it yet, um, and then for this, we're just going to uh, let's say content equals. Uh, let's do paragraph tag and hi and let's also add a title so we're going to do title equals this is a test page okay so inside of this we're just going to return these two variables as an array so let's do return and we're going to do the first one is going to again be the title so title is going to equal the title and then the next one is going to be content, and we're just going to push out the content that we have there. Okay, so now what we can do is call this class. Um, let me create a new file. We're going to call it index.php. This is just going to be your standard HTML5. Um, just change this to autoloader so we make sure we're in the right uh, files. So if we come over to our browser and we refresh, it's going to be blank. So what I want it to do is to display this information. If I want it to, let's say, like PHP echo content and then content, let's do title here. So title. If I did this, it's going to break it because it's currently doesn't know where that content variable is coming from. What we want to do is get the information from our class pages we want this to be accessible on so inside of this page. So what you can do, which is not the recommended way, is to include your file. So we're going to do PHP, and then let's do like require. Uh, let's see, require once, and we're going to require controllers slash pages dot PHP. So now that file is accessible. And then we can do something like content equals uh, pages. No, let's do. Uh, we need to do a new class. So let's do pages equals, and I believe it's going to be new pages. We're not passing any variable to that. And then the content is just going to be this function returned. So we're going to called this pages get page so content is going to equal to pages get page so now that content should become available if we go refresh here we can see that this is a test page which equals to our 
title here and then our content here. So what the auto loader will do, it will allow us to handle this a little bit better because what you don't want it to do is to have to basically create this every single time you add a new controller. So we're going to go in here and create an autoload.php. So autoload.php. And inside of this autoload.php, we're simply going to create a function that autoloads everything inside of our controllers folder as a controller that we can access later. So let's do function uh, autoload. So autoload. And then we're going to pass a class to that. And then in that function, we're just going to do include and controllers and then slash. We're going to pass that class and dot PHP. So this is just a simple way to be able to include all of that information. Now, in order to make it work the way that we need to in PHP, we need to run a function SPL auto load register so SPL auto load register and then we're going to register that function we just created so auto load now we have a um, a section that if we call it from here so instead of require once um, controllers pages we're just going to do require once auto load PHP and we'll get the exact same re result but now every time we add a new class to this folder it's going to be accessible to us now there's also another way that we can do it to make it even better just kind of keeping everything in one place so we have our auto load function um, our yeah auto load function here being called here so I'm going to also take this pages equals new page and we're going to remove it from our index.php and we're just going to add it here so now every time we go to create a new class inside of our controllers we can access it here and then just do the new. So this will still work. So pages get page because it's being registered inside of this instead of inside of where it's uh, where it was. So now if we refresh our page, it still works. And we can also come down here and say PHP echo content content. All right, so that gives us the ability to um, pull the information from that class. Now what's also kind of cool about this is what we can do with other classes. So let's say we want to create another class. So I'm going to do new file and it's going to be setup.php. Um, inside of this setup.php, let's create a class called setup. So class setup. And then inside of this class, we're going to do a public function settings. So this is going to return an array for us with various settings that we have. So the first setting I want to do, so let's do return, and then it's just going to be an array. So the first setting I want to do is slug, and this is going to equal uh, this page. So what's going to end up happening is we're going to create a variable called this page, and we're going to have it return so that we can, I'll, I'll show you how we can use some of these um, controllers. Um, so in order to get the, uh, the page slug, what I'm going to do is create a function that does it. So we're going to do URL. Let me expand this out. So URL is set server. And this isn't necessary for what we're, what you're, what you can do with this. If you've already found what you need, um, you can just you know, turn off the video now because essentially the auto loader is created. I'm just showing you how to use it in various formats. So this right here, what I'm creating is going to grab the uh, the page slug that we're currently on and it's going to pass it so that we can use it. And I'll show you what that's for as soon as I get done typing this up. So it's not equal to on. So we're gonna pass HTTP. Uh, HTTPS. Otherwise, we're going to pass HTTP, and then we're going to pass the server host and the server um, request URI. So we need to do colon slash slash, 
and then server HTTP host and server and then this is going to be request URI okay so that should give us the URL I gotta close that out um, that should give us the URL that we're looking for and this is is set HTTPS so it's gonna verse check to see if it's HTTPS if not um, it's going to return the HTTP version of it so now this is gonna give us the whole URL so I want to use the parse URL function to grab what I need so we're using the variable this page and we're gonna have this page is gonna be equal to parse URL we're gonna pass in that URL we just created and then it's gonna be PHP URL path and that should give us the uh, the page name or the, the the slug for it so if we come back to our index we don't have to go through there and you know redeclare everything but we do want to make sure that it is accessible so we're going to come over here and we're going to say setup and then this is just going to be a setup variable so inside of the setup the only thing we're calling is just settings so if we come over here and we could do a print r um, setup settings is that what I called it? Settings, yes. So if we do a print R settings, that should give us an array with the slug of a slash. And if we come over here and say like about, it's not going to work because we don't have the HT access set up. I'll show you how to do that in just a second as well. But right now, if it was working, it would give us slash about. So let's go ahead and get that part working by creating an HT access file inside of our main folder. So we're going to do dot HT access. And then inside of this HT access file, we're going to do rewrite engine on uh, rewrite um, condition. And this is basically going to take and create like a simplified MVC where everything is being rerouted through the index.php file so that you, know, you can control it with the code and the function and the classes. So just bear with me. This is ht access um, server setup code so we're going to do request file name and then um, exclamation minus f and I'm going to copy this and paste it down because it's essentially the same thing but we're going to add a d to the end and then finally we want to run the rewrite rule and this is where the magic happens. It's going to take and everything that goes through anything that happens on this server is going to be rerouted through our slash index.php. Then we're just going to pass a path equals dollar sign one in CL, just setting some flags for it, QSA. So that should make it work. So now if we come back to our browser and we refresh, now we have slash about. We can do the same thing, uh, contact, you know, whatever it is. But it's still pulling the information that was supplied initially. So let's come over here into our index.php. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this. And what we wanted to do is to pass this information along. So what we could do is something like this. We have our git page. We can come over here and say slug. And then in our index, we could pass it where the, uh, the git page is the slug that's being pulled from it. Um, so right now we have auto load. We have our setup. So let me undo this. So this setup settings is what we're going to use. And inside of this, we're going to call it. So this is a long roundabout way to do it and I'll show you the better way to do it in just a second. So we're grabbing that function so now we can come over here to settings and just pull the uh, slug URL and then on our pages we can just um, echo out what that slug is so that we can test that it works. So slash contact so now we know we're able to get that slug. Um, inside of our pages.php, let's just create some functionality 
that's going to return different content. Um, again, not something that you have to do, just something that I'm going to add in here so you can kind of see how we can pass some of these variables um, to each function and classes uh, because of the auto load the way it's been done. So let's do a switch statement. So switch, we're going to pass that slug, and then that slug is we're going to be first looking for the case of this one, and if this is correct, we're just going to change this content. So we can go ahead and get rid of this up here, paste it in here, and let's just change this to title to home page. And I'm going to copy and paste some lorem ipsum inside of this. All right, so that's the first one. Let's go ahead and add a break. So if it finds it, it breaks out of it. And then I'm going to copy this and let's create another one that is going to be for the about. So slash about. And then we're going to change this to about us. And then finally, we need to have where it returns um, default information if none of those are accessible. So we're going to do default and the title is just going to be um, missing because this is like a 404 return for us. So let's do missing, add a comma, and the content equals this page is missing. And there we go. All right, so now we should be able to do the regular slash and then the about. So contacts going to show missing. This page is missing. If we go to the home page, it should show now the home page. If we do slash about, it'll show us the about us. So now we can get rid of this echo slug because we don't need it. So now we have a working page here. Um, let's go ahead and wrap this in an H1 so it's a little bit more visible. So now we have our H1 and our content that we can change. We can add anything that we want to to the page's return. Just right now, it's title and content. And let me move that down. OK, so that is one way to go about getting it. There is another way that we can do it as well that's a little bit more simplified. So on our index, we don't need to grab this or pass this along or anything like that. We can just run our Git page and then Inside of our pages, we're going to create a construct, uh, a construct function. So up here, we're going to do public function construct. And then inside of this, we're going to pass the setup. So setup here, which is being declared here inside of our auto load. And then we want to create this variable. So we're going to do this settings equals setup settings, lowercase. Setup settings. And that's going to give us our URL that we no longer need to do here. We can just pass it down here. So we're going to do slug equals this settings but we also made a change to the way this pages class is called we're passing in a setup variable inside of our construct so inside of our auto load we need to make sure that it's being passed where it needs to here as well so we have our setup variable we're going to pass our setup variable to the class which gets set here so now if we come over here and we refresh it and it's showing an error right now because the construct class needs to have two underscores in front of it. So if we refresh it now, it's showing what we want it to. Now, inside of this settings, it's not the variable that we're needing to grab. We actually need to pass it as an array and grab that slug. So this settings slug should produce us the result that we want. So now we're on the about. We take this away, we're on the home page. If we come anywhere else, like a contact page, it's missing. But we can go and create those pages pretty easily or have them, you know, route wherever they need to go, you know, so forth and so on. Um, that can be shown in another tutorial. So let's do something like services and then change this to services. And if we refresh this, 
so services. Now we have a services page and about page, a dashboard or a home page, and then a 404. So this is kind of the general gist of it. I'm going to open the auto load back up. Essentially, in order to create a PHP auto load, you can create them with just a few lines of code. Um, there's also where you can create multiple auto loaders if your project already has an auto loader. It does have some priority settings that you need to worry about, but if you're starting a brand new project, this is a great way to be able to kind of include all of your classes and make them accessible um, to make it where that you can call various things in different ways using classes and functions. So hopefully you learned something from this tutorial. Um, it's a simple tutorial. I figured I'd do a quick one today. So if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. But this is a very simple way to do an auto load class in PHP. So good luck with your project. And I uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.